Hello, hello, and welcome back to Inspirations, where you can find encouragement to inspire a life. This is Dana Susan Beasley of angelarts.biz, and as you may have noticed, I'm doing something a bit differently this week. Since it is Holy Week, I am reading the scriptures from the Gospels. So, before I get started though, if you would like to get my complete Falling in Love with the Bridegroom devotional for free, that's the one I've been doing up until this point, then check the link in the description below. This devotional will teach you how to have quiet times and give you ample scriptures to spend in devoted, devoted study to our Lord, and most importantly, with our Lord. Now let's get to today's devotional, and I'm going to start with prayer. Dear Lord, I thank you that you understand what it means to be betrayed, that you loved the person who most betrayed you, you loved him to the end. Thank you, Lord, for how you went through and was obedient to your Heavenly Father and help us to see you and to gaze on you and to worship you in your presence. And it's in your precious name I pray. Amen. So today I'm going to read starting in Mark 14. And this may have happened Wednesday. I don't think really anybody knows, but here we go. Friends, this is the word of the Lord, and I'm reading from the New King James Version. I forgot to say that. After two days, it was the Passover, and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might take him, Jesus, by trickery, and put him to death. But they said, Not during the feast, lest there be an uproar of the people. And being in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came having an alabaster flask of very costly oil of spikenard. Then she broke the flask and poured it on his head. But there were some who were indignant among themselves and said, Why was this fragrant oil wasted? For it might have been sold for more than three hundred denarii and given to the poor. And they, criti they criticized her sharply. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a good work for me, for you have the poor with you always, and whenever you wish, you may do them good, but me you do not have always. She has done what she could. She has come beforehand to anoint my body for burial. Assuredly, I say to you, whenever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be told as a memorial to her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to the chief priests to betray him to them. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money, so he sought how he might conveniently betray him. Yes, that is one of the hardest things about Holy Week is the betrayal of Judas, a man who misunderstood what Jesus was here for, he thought that Jesus would come and raise an army and defeat the Romans. And so that Israel would be free from their oppressors. And he also was probably one of the ones who was indignant about the woman who poured the spikenard on Jesus. And how relatable is this? I don't know about you. I'm sure you have been through this, but I have been through so much betrayal. It's one of those things about this story of the gospel that endears Jesus to me because he gets it. You know, as that controversial commercial says, he gets me. He understands how painful it is to have someone betray you because it's not 
those that we don't love that betray us and hurt us deeply is those that we do love. And Jesus loved Judas and he forgave him. In the psalm, it talks about this. David, King David, wrote about it with his friend who betrayed him. It's a foreshadowing or a prophecy of what would happen with Jesus. He says, Even my close friend in whom I trusted, who ate my bread, has lifted up his heel against me. And you will find later on in the Gospels in the Passover. Let's see if I could find this real quick. He, uh, he tells... I don't know, I can't see it right now, but he tells he tells Judas, he says to the disciples, he who I dip this bread into the wine is the one who will betray me. And they just didn't get it. And so he told Judas, whatever you're going to do, do it now. And Satan entered him and he betrayed him. So, and then I wanted to read something I came across today. I came across this poem and St. Albans Episcopal Church posted this. Judas ate two, as in T-O-O. Hours before the death of Jesus, Judas ate two. Jesus fed Judas, Jesus fed Judas two. Jesus prayed for Judas two. Jesus washed Judas's feet two. I struggle to fathom what kind of love this is. A love that would feed the mouth that deceived you. A love that would wash the feet of the traitor. A love that could forgive even the vilest of betrayals. Honestly, I struggle to comprehend it. And then suddenly I realize that I'm Judas too. And in that moment, I'm so thankful and altogether overwhelmed that Judas ate too. The true test of Christianity is not about loving Jesus, but loving Judas. Showing love to someone like Jesus is so easy. But loving someone hard to love, a sinner like Judas, is difficult. That's what following Jesus is all about. And it's by the woman by the well. That's powerful. As I said, we all have Judases in our life. In our lives. Can we love them? Can we forgive them? It's hard. Without Jesus, I couldn't do that. I would be I would be holding a grudge which in the long run is not good for me. So maybe you have a Judas in your life, maybe you have one right now who betrayed you and hurt you deeply. Maybe just life circumstances hurt you and you are bitter and you are angry. Sure there is a a grieving process when you've lost something and anger is part of that however if it starts if it starts to create a root of bitterness in you then it's gone too far so and i'm speaking to myself too it's so important to let go and release those feelings and forgive that person who betrayed you does not mean, especially if they're a toxic person, that you have to reconcile with them. There's a difference between forgiveness and reconciliation. I know that too well. But if you don't forgive, if you harbor this hatred and this hurt, then that is going to grow up into into an opportunity for Satan to come and harass you, come and attack you. That gives him the legal right to do that. And it's not going to help your soul. It's going to give you trauma. And you're going to have a damaged soul. And I say again, I say all this because I've been through it. I've walked through it. And it's not easy. But this is a good time, a good week to reflect on that. And just to take a few minutes today and go through those who have betrayed you and say, Okay, God, I give them into your hands. Revengeance is mine, says the Lord. I release them. I forgive them. 
I was sad that, and then, you know, list that down, write it down. I am angry that, write all this stuff down. I am disappointed that. I regret that, you know, write these things down and get these feelings out. Because the thing I found with forgiveness is, yes, it's a choice. And it's a choice of the will with the help of the Holy Spirit. But there are real feelings that you have to deal with. You can't just stuff them down. Say, well, it doesn't matter. It's okay. No, that's not how you deal with it. You you work through those feelings and release them. Sometimes with people, you can work it out with them in person or over a letter or an email or a text. Very careful with electronic communication because it never is as good as being in person. There's always something that just doesn't communicate well. But anyway, all that to say, work through those emotions and give it to Jesus. One time, a long time ago, I... I felt particularly betrayed by a whole group of people. I mean, really, really badly. And I wrote down on a piece of paper on the left. I wrote, had two columns. On the left side, I wrote how they had sinned against me, how they'd hurt me. And I had a long list. And then on the right side, I wrote how I had sinned against God. Believe me, that list was a lot longer. So I X'd out that side of where my sins against God, because he forgave me. He died for me. He rose again. And then, because he did that for me, I X'd out the left side where the people I'm talking about had hurt me. Because if I've been forgiven, I can forgive others. That is a huge message that Jesus says in the Gospels. So, all that to say, do that at some point today. Take a journal. Do what I suggested, either the the prompts of, I am sad that, I am angry, I regret, I am bitter, whatever words that you could think of, get out those emotions and then do the column thing that I suggested and then bring that all to Jesus, have a conversation with him, put those people at his feet. You know, if, if you need to, another idea, I'm just thinking about this on the top of my head is take a scrap of paper, write down those those ways you've been sinned against by these people or this person who has betrayed you. And then on Good Friday, take that piece of paper and put it at the cross. Like have a cross and put it at it. I know that one year we have this huge cross in our yard and one year we nailed that stuff to the cross. And then we like, after that, we shred it in little pieces of paper. I know that we burnt them in the past. So that's a very symbolic way to express that you're giving those hurts over to God because he died for those. All right. I know that was long, but I had a lot to think about because <laughs> I've had a lot of experience in this area of people betraying me so much. But I tell you, the worst betrayal other than rejecting God, which is really bad, is to reject yourself and to internalize this and say, well, there must be something wrong with me because they rejected me. They betrayed me. And that, that grieves God's heart too. I know because I've done it. Hating yourself, rejecting yourself is not the answer. Just remember, God loves you. He loves you so much that he he went through all of this agony and he he wasn't afraid. He wasn't afraid to say what needed to be said to the religious leaders of the day, to Pharisees and the Sadducees. And so they killed him. They killed him and the Romans killed him. That's what he came for. The religious leaders, you know. So 
All right, I am going to stop rambling, I promise, and I'm going to say a prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I lift to you all of my hurts, all the ways that I've been betrayed, and the same with the audience that are listening to this. I lift them up to you. Help us to know that you love us so much that you died for us. Help us to release these hurts to you, to trust that you're going to deal with that person in your time, in your way. Thank you that you do get us. And that you actually bottle up all of our tears and all of our moans and groans. And you see us. So I thank you, Lord, and help us as we, as we go through Holy Week to reverence you and to adore you. And it's in your precious name I pray. Amen. All right. Whew, I did not know I was going to go so long. I, d- I don't plan these things, especially right now, since I'm doing this off the cuff, just reading the scripture and then sharing my thoughts about it. It's that simple. Whew, all right. Well, that's all for the day. Tomorrow, I'll continue my series on Holy Week, which is going to be about Passover. That's going to be wild, too. So hang on to your hats. And next week, I'll resume my Falling in Love with the Bridegroom series, starting with Song of Solomon 2. That's going to be wild also. Now, if you want the free devotional like I talked about, check the link below. Would you like to go deeper into the scriptures? Find out more about my Becoming God's Bride Bible study. Check that out also in the description box below. So with that, I'm going to leave you with my favorite blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. This is Dana Susan Beasley of AngelArts.biz. Together, may we reach new heights in our lives and beyond. <music>